the last step in the stock making process is to recreate the original checkering design. Let me show you how we do that. Remember, Grandpa made this stock, but he didn't checker it. We have an original Parker from the same period to give us an example of what the checkering looked like. The pattern starts at the guard and continues over the top. It's also flat topped, which means the diamonds aren't pointed, but are defined by the crossing lines. Before I can begin checkering, I need a way to hold the stock. The easiest way to do this is to use a checkering cradle. This holds the stock securely while allowing it to be rotated. I've got the stock attached to the receiver to protect the head of the stock. To lay out the checkering pattern, all I need are a few simple tools. A center line on the top of the grip will help keep the patterns even on both sides. Next, I'll locate the front points by transferring the distance from the tang on the original gun to the stock, then marking how far away these points should be from the center line. The same technique is used to locate the point where the checkering panels meet behind the trigger guard. I've used a thin piece of tape to give a constant gap between the panels. A long, thin piece of brass taped between these two points defines my master line. Then I'll follow along the edge of the brass with a fine tip marker and repeat for the other side. After the master lines are drawn on the stock, it's a simple task to cut them in with a 60 degree single line cutter. I start with a light first pass just to follow the line then a couple of heavier passes to deepen it. To make cutting the crossing lines easier, I'll rotate the vise. The next step is to begin laying out the lines in the pattern. They are cut at a rather coarse 16 lines per inch, which is pretty typical of the period. To space out the lines, I'm using a 16 lines per inch spacer that's smooth on one side and cuts on the other. The smooth side will follow the line while the cutting edge makes a new line. Since this is flat top checkering, the layout lines don't need to be very deep. I'll continue to lay out lines until I reach the first point in the pattern. Before I lay out any more lines, I'll mark the approximate location of the next point so that I don't extend any of the lines too far. After those lines are cut in, the last point can be marked. It's about even with the first one, so I'll simply count out 11 lines, which duplicates the factory pattern. Then I can cut in the remaining lines. They are left a little short until I cut in the crossing lines, which will determine the end points. A piece of tape helps prevent extending the lines outside the pattern. The crossing lines are much more challenging to cut, kind of like riding a four-wheeler across a frozen cornfield. Once I'm ready to create the middle point, I'll draw it in with a marker, then extend the lines with the single line cutter. The middle point is defined by six lines. I've got the same number on the new stock. The sixth line makes the last point. Now I can extend these lines and finish the point then continue to lay out crossing lines. The short lines are easier to lay out with the veiner. Once all the lines have been laid out, the deepening process begins with the flat top checkering tool. It's designed to cut a square bottom groove and leave the tops of the diamonds flat. As compared with a regular checkering tool, which cuts a V-shaped groove with the tops pointed. The lines are cut all the way to the trigger guard inletting as there was no margin in this area on the original pattern. At the border, the hook and pull method is used and I only engage the front portion of the tool. 
This also helps when the lines are shorter than the cutting portion of the checkering tool. In the really tight spots, the veining tool works great. After the first pass, the diamonds are no longer symmetrical. However, as the crossing lines are cut, the diamonds return to their proper shape. Now I can turn the stock and begin checkering the other side. Once the other grip panel is finished, I have to fill in this little area. By duplicating this point on the original stock. Extending each of these six lines is all it takes. After the lines are laid out, they are deepened to match the rest of the pattern. Now it's time to cut in the border, which is started with the 16 lines per inch spacing tool. I'll cut completely around the pattern, then deepen the line with the flat top checkering tool. The fore end is next. The original fore end wasn't checkered, so again, I'll use this original Parker for a pattern. Holding a piece this small is a bit of a challenge. I've drilled two holes in a board that match the spacing for the fore end iron. The fore end is then attached and the board is installed in a checkering cradle. To begin laying out the pattern, I'll mark a center line down the fore end and between the escutcheons. The diamonds on the original checkering are three to one and the master lines pass through the midpoint of the fore end. The pattern goes all the way to the end. The template helps define the master lines and I cut them in using a 60 degree single line cutter. I'll stop slightly short of the marked line as it will become the border when the pattern is finished. Once the master lines are cut, I'll begin spacing out the pattern again at 16 lines per inch. I'm adding a few progress marks to help keep the line straight. Since I'm checkering at 16 lines per inch, I'll space them out at one quarter inch which is every fourth line. A piece of tape helps remind me to stop. Once the first few lines are cut, I'll extend them nearly to the edge. It's gratifying when all of the lines are spaced out correctly and line up with the progress marks. Now I can extend the lines to the edge of the pattern with a 60 degree single line cutter. Next, I begin to space out the lines in the other direction. Again, using progress marks to ensure they're evenly spaced and straight. Once the final line is cut, I'll swap the cradle end for end and finish ends of the lines. The process is repeated for the other end of the pattern. The border is laid out around the entire pattern with the 16 line per inch spacing tool. Now I can lay out the bow tie, which is drawn in evenly on both sides to match the original forend. The short lines are easier to lay out with the veiner. Now that the entire forend pattern is complete, I'll begin deepening the lines with the flat top checkering tool. To finish up, I'll cut the border around the bow tie. The last step is to brush in a little finish to seal the grain. Any excess is wiped off with a paper towel. And the finish really brings out the pattern. 